The Sims 4 is a special game. Although it's modern, it doesn't call for the highest end parts and every absolute thing that a computer can have in order to run smoothly and beautifully. In this video, I'm going to be sharing three computers that I have personally designed for The Sims 4 at three different price points coming up. Hi, I'm Weezer and welcome back to WeSims, an online community where I help you explore simulation games like The Sims series in a more like analytical and educational but still fun kind of way. If you think you'd like to see more content just like this one, be sure to subscribe and if you like this video please let me know by leaving a thumbs up I really appreciate it so I'm making this video for a few reasons one is that I've seen a lot of confusion in the sims community particularly with the legacy edition coming out and people being like what what do with my computer what next what do I move to and as someone with a little bit of personal experience with computer building, not extensive, not professional, I wanted to share the little bit of knowledge that I do have with a community that is a little bit more tailored to simmers. I'm hoping that these computers will possibly be a good springboard for you into getting to play the game at a budget that you can afford as well as with a clear upgrade path so you don't feel like a dead end with whatever it is that you did try and build in the first place. The Sims 4 is also a really nice game to build for and by build I don't mean like a house in The Sims 4 like I mean an actual computer because like I said at the beginning you don't need the absolute top of the top line to run the game absolutely top of the top line if that makes sense. So this is a huge plus for those of you who are maybe console gamers and want to move over to desktop computers or if you already have a desktop computer and are trying to see like what kind of upgrades are possible or if you just want to start playing the sims 4 and get it like on a good trajectory with a good computer that will last you for a while just some disclaimers the first thing is that it's not a how to build your own pc kind of video but they are excellent resources from really highly reputable people in the pc hardware space and i will link particular videos to a guide from paul's hardware as well as one from bitwit the second disclaimer being is that i'm not a pc professional not even a little bit and i don't claim to be a pc professional what i can tell you with all honesty is that i went through the exact same process as when I built my own computer which is about a month two months old now. In terms of general guidelines you have seven basic parts to a computer. So you have your motherboard, your CPU or your processor, your GPU or your video card or graphics card, your RAM, your storage, a power supply unit as well as a case. And an important thing for the CPU this is that all of these CPUs are 64-bit so when you install Windows on them Make sure that it is a 64-bit Windows for your 64-bit operating system so you will run The Sims 4 post Legacy Edition Chaos. I am aware that The Sims across the different generations of the game, 1, 2, 3, 4, have CD versions as well as digital downloads. In modern PC building, it's pretty rare nowadays to come across a computer that has an optical drive in it which is basically the cd drive and i didn't account for having a cd drive but if you did want one that would just be like a little drive that you plug in via usb if you did have games that you wanted to use cds for if you want like a link to all of these parts in the same place i have created three kits on kit.co that has the entry level mid-range and higher end slash streaming PC and each of those kits has all of the parts that I am listing here today. If you want to go to the individual parts, I have Amazon affiliate links, which basically means that at no charge to you, I get a small commission should you purchase something using that link. I'm not going to be going to all of these parts multiple times because I've chosen the same parts in different places so that you get more use out of them. The vast majority of these parts came out in the second half of 2019. So you can, if you have a little bit more knowledge and experience, swap out for like older versions, which will also obviously be more affordable. But I really wanted this to be the kind of computer that you could build now and rest assured that it will probably even take you into The Sims 5 when that comes out in about like three, four years time. I'd recommend you check out PC Part Picker. PC Part Picker is awesome for testing compatibility between motherboards and CPUs and GPUs and cases even to make sure that your parts fit into one another really nicely. I will give you the costs of these at the time that of recording and then I will give you the costs in the income incremental upgrades that you would have to do, basically the relative costs if you are moving from one system to the other, so that you can see how much it would mean practically for you in the long run if you were to commit to this upgrade path. I would highly recommend, especially if you're viewing this around the festive period time, to check out for deals and use things like Honey. I love Honey, I use it all the time to check like when there are price drops on particular parts that you're looking for, and I'll leave a link to that as well in the description. So starting with our entry level build. Now the entry level build 
gold is at 400 US dollars but I understand that 400 dollars is a lot of money to a lot of people and I tried my absolute best to get the highest quality parts for a particular cost point and even though you can get away with a really basic computer with any parts really I personally did not feel comfortable recommending things which are like not or just a no-go things that i wouldn't use so the first thing is the amd ryzen 3 3200g what it allows you to do is aside from the fact that it functions really well is that it has an integrated graphics processor you can save two to three hundred dollars of buying like an entry to mid-level graphics card and actually just use the graphics processing that's available integrated into the amd chipset and it should allow you practically to play the sims 4 on at least the lowest settings very smoothly the next part would be looking at the motherboard the msi b450a pro now this motherboard is not the prettiest and i must be honest i like pretty things but this is one of the most affordable motherboards from msi msi is also a highly reputable brand definitely one that is going to carry you through into the next version of this build and although it's not the prettiest motherboard it boasts something called an m.2 slot and that's important because i recommend one of those and i'll get to that later next looking at ram now ram is really nice because you don't need to buy the absolute most at the very beginning you can actually just start off with a base level of eight gigabytes the ram here is optimized for that cpu there so it's not just the cheapest ram i could find it's highly reputable g skill i use g skill ram and is compatible with the motherboard etc etc next is something that will probably differ with other pc people on the internet and that is that i am recommending an nvme m.2 drive from the get-go so you get your hard drive then you get your SD SSD solid state drives and these are a step up they're faster and in more recent history there has been the introduction of NVMe drives and NVMe M.2 is basically the absolute fastest that you can get for the general like layperson. Storage is quite possibly one of the most important things for a simmer aside from processor and graphics card which like shares number one. Storage is really important for us, especially if you're a custom content addict, no judgment, been there. And NVMe nowadays has been really affordable. And the reason why I chose this one, A, is because I use this one and I have had excellent experience with it. And the second thing is that the pricing is actually like negligible now. There's like a five to $10 difference between the exact same amount of space, 250 gigabytes in a solid state drive, which is absolutely crazy. Like to think of how the prices have come down and especially with the motherboard that I've selected, you'd still have four slots if you wanted to add more space. Like you could literally just look out for a really nice sale and get it like a one terabyte SSD for a really good price and just slap it on there. And then you have your game functioning from a really, really high speed storage device. And then your other content, you either your custom content or your screenshots or your backups are in another drive. So I would highly recommend this for those reasons and particularly for simmers. Now we get to the case. The Cooler Master Masterbox NR600 is one that was rated the best budget case by Gamers Nexus and Gamers Nexus is an extremely highly reputable YouTube channel and website actually for testing and like have like really transparent and very good testing methods to make sure that if they recommend something that they really mean it and this was the budget case of 2019 so you don't need to do much more to this case for it to be good and you don't want a hot case because a stuffy computer and a hot computer is going to make your parts not last as long as they could finally is a power supply don't skimp on power supplies very dangerous because if you get it cheap no one knows who made this power supply kind of power supply you are going to use a lot of electricity unnecessarily to power your computer and you're going to put your parts at risk i guess that's just my motto for this whole thing and i skimped on nothing here and these are the like bare minimums for high quality things that i could find so corsair is a super reputable brand usually a little bit more pricey than others but their power supplies have excellent warranties and this one in particular will not just get you up and running but you can like rest assured that you have a good quality power supply and that that will not be a source of issue for your other parts the power supply is also going to last you really well into the mid-range version of this build when you are able to add a graphics card to your build and this power supply will have enough power to actually give your computer that so you actually have a really nice component as part of your upgrade path here and speaking of upgrade path let us move on to the mid-range build the 
the mid-range build comes to like just underneath like $600 and this build is actually going to take you up quite a bit and you may actually very well be able to play on medium, high or even like ultra settings. I can't promise the ultra but I have faith that this is a really good build for that. I'm using the same CPU here. Why am I using the same CPU? Even with changing times it's still going to last you a while and we're going to be using the same motherboard for the same reasons that I've outlined and the same RAM if you are buying mid-range from the start get the 2 by 8 gigabytes. If you are upgrading you don't need to buy 2 by 8 gigabytes you can literally just get another kit 2 by 4 gigabytes to get a total of 16 gigabytes on your motherboard which will be cheaper and you have then the same amount of memory with the same amount of speed once again the same storage at this point you might even want to consider getting an ssd and slapping that on the side not slapping it that's aggressive um, installing it gently same case and same power supply where things get very different and where the price gets hiked up is the graphics card and your graphics card is now going to be your entry into very high and beautiful sims 4 experiences and i'm really excited that i did this video at the time that i did because these graphics cards that i'm recommending today were only announced like a couple of weeks ago like they are fresh on the market and well reviewed already by gamers nexus paul's hardware whatever when you are looking for a graphics card two things to keep in mind is that Different companies make different versions of the same card, but essentially if you find a graphics card that says it is the GTX 1650 Super, then you know it is that card that I'm recommending. But the way that it's manifested is that some of the graphics cards will have two fans, some of them will have three fans, some of them will have fancy lighting, some of them will have extra display ports. There is a lot of variation about the different ways that these graphics cards can be presented to the consumer. So if you were to find another graphics card, making sure it fits into your case, and you can use PC Part Picker for that as well, but if you were to find another graphics card that is also a GeForce GTX 1650 Super, but it's cheaper, just check out the reviews to make sure it's legit and go forth and get it and save your money there because at the core of it it's still the same graphics card now moving on to the higher end gaming and streaming pc for the sims this build is coming in at 850 us dollars approximately and the important thing here is that if you are following an upgrade path so you started at the entry level worked your way up to the mid-range which only involved adding a couple parts it wasn't that different to the entry level so that this computer has many different parts like most of the components are actually new and different to the ones that i've recommended in the beginner and mid-range builds and in this category i did consider here that if you are having a gaming and streaming pc is that you might want something that also looks a bit nicer so that was factored into this as well if you are fine with the stuff that i've recommended thus far and you have actually enjoy how they look then you don't need to change the things that I recommend for changing if that is what you're looking. And I would urge you to not, if, especially if you don't have the money at hand, to not buy all of these parts at the same time if you're upgrading from the mid-range computer. You can swap out and add and remove parts as you go along as you see fit and you can upgrade and this is an arbitrary like example but a way that I would upgrade this is that I would start with the CPU, then the motherboard, then the power supply, then upgrading your graphics card, then your case finally. And it's not an exact science, it just makes sense to me and I could be wrong and there may actually be a an evidence-based way to do it. I just couldn't find it. Starting with our processor here. So the processor is the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 and Wraith Stealth Cooler. So you get both a processor and a cooler. That will basically mean that you save the cost of having to buy one, especially at the beginning and has across the board in many different reputable hardware benchmark reviews shown to be high value. This is going to allow you to process multiple things more efficiently and more comprehensively. So you will actually be able to both play your Sims 4 as well as stream it. And there is power in here that will allow you to do editing as well. The next thing moving on to is the motherboard. Now the motherboard, you can choose to upgrade this or not because in all honesty, it's the same at its core as the MSI one. But what makes me want to put it forward here, aside from the fact that I'm an Asus fan girl, many people will disagree with me. I'm fine with that, but I do believe that you should have a computer that's at least nice to look at. And the MSI board is very no frills, like it's bare bones, exactly what you need to get the work done. And if you are cool with that, 
go for it stick with it please do if you are like me and you yearn for beautiful things then i would recommend you get this motherboard which is the asus prime b450 plus and it's the same chipset at its core you're not going to get like different functionality but it is a beautiful white motherboard it also has rgb lighting the the rainbow lighting basically that you can set it's really tastefully done i think after a certain point if you're building a computer for multiple reasons and spending a lot of money on it it should be something that you are completely happy with but that's a soapbox so it just looks better the next is the ram remembering now that if you are upgrading from the entry to the mid range you should already have 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz ram then same storage then we get to the case the case is rated as the best overall which is the most highly coveted case from Gaben's Nexus for 2019 and it is objectively just good it is a very good case it'll just be a much more performance driven as well as like aesthetically driven computer as well but the airflow in this is going to be important especially because you're going to be generating more heat from your parts and yeah so that's why i recommend you change your case as well because your case is going to need to help vent all of the extra heat that your cpu and gpu is going to be pumping out when you are doing multiple processes like streaming and gaming simultaneously then we get to the next upgrade the gtx 1660 super not like the 1650 super that i recommended for the mid-range the 16 60 Super offers even more performance and will actually give you near guaranteed ultra settings like I think I can I, I will be very certain that this will give you ultra settings in the sims 4 and it was just released and proven to be a really good card with really good value for money this is just from Zotac which is one of the partner manufacturers that like take the original graphics card and put it into different formats and if you find it cheaper and you see specifically 1660 super then you are good to go finally is to upgrade your power supply you're going to need a higher power supply that will be able to accommodate all of this and once again sticking with the corsair series it is a really good power supply it is one that like i said i would recommend personally 100 percent and this will basically carry you through for whatever upgrades like you would even want to have in the future and i believe that that brings us to the end of this video my question of the day today is what computer are you actually using at the moment i am very curious are you using a laptop a desktop do you play sims on console do you use Apple? And what is your experience playing The Sims 4? Thank you again so much for watching. I really hope that you found this valuable and I will see you in the next video. Sul sul.